Okay, some numbers to commence with. Here goes this man. Looking down the screen at this man. He played 86 tests, 309 wickets at 27. Best of six for 23 in an innings. Eight five for us. There's a nine for us there as well, which, which we'll talk about. Uh, 235 wickets in uh, white ball cricket at 25 across both formats. 566 first class wickets at 25 and 25 as uh, we respect him massively in this country. I think I'll speak for all Australians. Yeah, you I'll do. often do that. Yeah. Mainly because he was big and fast and he made us afraid. <laughs> and, and, and that's the language that we speak. <laughs> we speak that language here. <laughs> Uh, he also texted earlier today saying he was nervous about this interview. Uh, so, Mornay, the warmest of welcomes to the great cricketer, mate. And um, why are you nervous? I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Um, obviously, I, I've heard quite a lot of good things about this podcast and this chat. But uh, um, you, never, you never know what to expect. But uh, thank you very much for that great introduction. I was, you know, it was my job to do a drum roll. I don't know what I was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> most most of the guys just correct us on any statistical inaccuracies, yeah. you know. But yeah. um, let, 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 me, let me start where we always start, Morn, and, and this is the premise of the show. So somewhere around the start of this year, I, I saw a link to a YouTube clip titled Mornay Morkel Highlights versus Sutherland, first grade, <laughs> round 14, 2020, 2021. Yeah. For those who are listening, Sutherland is a Sydney grade cricket club. And I thought, yep, I'll click that. And uh, it's four and a half minutes of you terrorising <laughs> Sutherland's first grade batsman. Um, so what's your relationship to club or grade cricket and how did you find the Sydney experience in particular? Yeah, let me just say that was just before the IPL auction, you know, because I don't play a lot of... Oh, you know, so I paid the guys actually a bit of money under the table. So listen, just post a video of me looking good. Uh, and then if I get picked up, we can, we can sort something out. So... Uh, you know, they did a great job with the video, but unfortunately, they didn't get picked up in the auction, which, uh, you know, sucks. But, um, yeah, it started sort of my journey with club cricket. Great cricket started about a year and a half ago. Um, and I moved moved from from South Africa to, to Australia. And um, I was playing my cricket in, in, in the UK. And, yeah, I needed to get some overs under my belt before the start of the UK season. And um, sort of just rocked up at training at Manly one day and, you know, um, said I'm available to play. And, you know, yeah, from there it sort of kick-started and um, what, a, what a club to be involved with, mm-hmm. I must say. You know, awesome facilities, great bunch, bunch of guys. And, uh, um, yeah, I just kicked on from there. Did, mm. when, you, when you say you just rocked up to training, did you, did you literally just turn up at Manly Oval <laughs> unannounced and, and ask if you could have a game? Can I have a bowl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I basically just rocked up and uh, I said, guys, you know, I've got a couple of weeks before before the start of the UK season. I actually did first before that. I went to 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 the east, the to the New South Wales, you know, to train with the Blues. Mm-hmm. And um, just my luck, that was the day that uh, Davy Warner and Steve Smith. That was their first day back at training. And on that day, I rocked up to train. So you can imagine <laughs> the media. <laughs> of the, the old Sam Bivago. So here's Warner now rocking up at the Blues train. <laughs> Rolling to them with the net, and I'm like, no, I need to find a place, you know, I can hide and be more sort of, you know, <laughs> do my thing. Um, but yeah, so journey started then, and um, played now sort of a handful of games for Manly, which was which is awesome. Yeah, obviously some of the best cricket you've ever played in yeah. your life as probably well, across your career. Highest standard, probably a really high standard. It is a good standard, but I must say they sell the games, you know, on, on a Saturday very well to me. They said, well, no, please come. You know, don't worry. You won't have to bowl many overs. We're looking to get up 12 to 15 overs max out of you. And uh, every time I take this cherry and I, I rock up on a Saturday and I'm bowling like 25 overs or 20 <laughs> overs. So, uh, you know, this year, this coming season, I'll have to, to have a better selling point, but um, it's good fun. Like I said, it's, it's a good standard. And for me, you know, growing up as a youngster, um, we only played six to eight school games a year. So this, it was very, it was crucial for me to play top cricket. And, and, you know, for me, it was a great standard. And that's where my, my, my games, game sort of grow and develop. So to come back here and give back a little bit to cricket and help youngsters on the field, learn the game and to share a bit of knowledge, knowledge is awesome. As obviously now, and we sort of want to go back to the earlier part in your life, uh, Mornay and, and learn about there. And I, I understand that you used to live with your brother Albie and AB de Villiers at one time in, in Pretoria. And I, I want to know first of all, when was that? And also like was was AB like the perfect roommate? Do you know, did he pay did he pay his rent on time, even early, actually in advance? You know, was he good at mm. FIFA? Did he cook and clean? Mm. Or was he the kind of guy that you have to sort of report to flatmatefinder.com because he watches you sleeping as a pet snake? 
<laughs> so once yeah, once I got kicked out of the house, um, you know, signed a, a rookie contract to to play with the Titans, and we had a powerhouse team. You know, we mm. uh, AB was there, Faf was there. We had a, a really awesome team, and um, yeah. So me, my brother, my brother, and Albie, we we moved in together, and you know that this you can just imagine. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good fun. It was good fun. You know, I can't. I won't be. I won't be able to share a lot of the stories. We'll keep that <laughs> for you know. Even, Evening around a fire once, uh, you know, or evening around a fire. But um, yeah, I just, it just I think that the the thing about the, the whole sort of the three years we lived together was, um, you know, you you live, breathe, and sleep sport. So yeah. on the weekend, it is either watching the Springboks play the All Blacks or the Wallabies, or you know, we we, we go and play golf, or you go for the run in the morning, or you, you go, you know, gym. So that, I think that was a nice environment for me as a youngster mm. to grow up in a house like that, where we all, one always pushed each other, and two, it was it was sport crazy. Mm. And living with AB, AB was you know he was, he was the Prince of Pretoria, so it was nice <laughs> to live with the King, um, <laughs> you know, to drive with him in the car and and go to restaurants and go to to pubs and stuff like that. It is it is a great experience, and yeah. you know to grow un, un, although we're the same age but age to be under his wing and um yeah sort of start my my journey uh was great yeah i don't, I don't know if this is mythology Mornay, but uh go with it even if, if you like it but <laughs> that is it true that there's a story from the early days that you you bowled to when you were young you bowled to jacques callis in the nets in pretoria uh, and he just asked who you who you were and got you into the south africa team pretty soon after <laughs> True, very true. Um, so just to, to rewind to that story. So Ray Jennings, um, when I made my first first class team I played for was uh, was Easterns. And Ray Jennings was the was the coach at the time. And um yeah, Ray, Ray eventually became the coach of the, the national team and uh, England was touring South Africa and they wanted some tall bowlers to bowl at the nets because you know with Halmerson and Flintoff and all those guys were, were coming mm. to South Africa. So yeah, I bowled the, the, that afternoon to Jacques and um, so, you know, something just clicked and bowled quite well to him and yeah, was, after the net he walked, he walked sort of over and introduced himself and said to 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 Ray that I must play in this test match starting on Thursday, which was for me was like wow, you know, I was uh, from an, you know twenty one years old, face covered in pimples, didn't know what was going on in world life, and you've got the legend of Jacques Callas, you know, coming first of all and you know talking to you, which was awesome. So I ended up that test match just sort of sort of being like a a fifteenth man, like a sort of just in the change room helping out if guys needed to to. If they wanted to go hit balls, I would always be like a net bowler, bowl to them. And you know, what an awesome sort of five days to to see what it's like, you know, to be international cricketer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Monty, you played in probably one of the strongest ever South African teams. You guys had the ICC test mace for number one mace, test, yeah. the, the mace for, for like three years between 2012 and 15, I think it was. And you guys won heaps of series away as well, which is obviously – that's becoming rarer and rarer in, in test cricket now around the world. But I mean, like what yeah. in that team, you know, Amla, Faf was playing, you were in there, uh, Dale Stain, Graham Smith was a captain, obviously. Really? A B, yeah, he's a good player. Um, you know, like who was was there sort of like one leader which brought everyone together, or was there one sort of jokester which everyone sort of got around, or what was the sort of environment of that team during those years when you guys were the best team in the world? Um, yeah, I always always I love talking about this. I think one of the you know the strength of that team was we had a core of of, of great senior players, mm. real leaders, Jacques Callis, uh, Graham Smith, um, you know Hashim, and and everybody sort of played their part or did their role in a different sort of way. Um, you know, Bauchi was the guy that you know if we needed a, a kick up the arse, he would be the, the guy to listen. Boys, that's not good enough. Graham's people skills are you know how to get the best out of people was 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 amazing. And then Jacques just you know Ben Jacques was he was just a legend. And um, so the team back then was basically you know it was run by them. Um, mm. You know, the coach was he was just sort of a guy in the background making sure training and everything was well organized. But those guys, you know, playing under their, their wing was, was 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 amazing. You know, they stepped up when times were tough, um, really fronted up. I mean, coming here in 2008 and back in 2012, you know, it was massive for us to, to sort of start a reputation to to win, you know, away from home. Mm. And I think you know, two series against India, which has never been done before, actually came close to winning that series. Mm. Um, first time beating Australia in their backyard, England back home. So, um yeah, it was that and just a, a great sort of 
you know, getting a, a, a sort of identity of the team. You know, what, what is the Proteus? What does South Africa really stand for? And we spend heaps and heaps of hours. We actually locked our cricket bags for away, went on, on camps and really discovering our identity for the Proteus. And, mm. you know, the first, for the first time, I mean, I always talk about you know, playing for your country is great, but what, did it, what does it really mean? And there was real meaning behind, you know, playing for the Proteus. And that's where the whole Proteus fire thing started. You know, the first thing to re- regenerate after a felt fire was as a Proteus. And we took that sort of onto the field, no matter what it gets thrown at us as a team with politics, with you know, outside interference, the protea will be the thing that will always regenerate. And we became a real sort of power, powerful brand on and off the field just by living up to those things daily. Mm, that's, a, that's an unbelievable team. I think you guys um, took over England's number one ranking. You beat them and then you came to Australia and then you defended the crown uh, and you yeah. won that series there. I mean, and you and you would have seen some of the, the best innings you would have played with and against some of the best ever players, seen some of the great innings. But what are your memories of Rob Quiney's nine at the Gabba in 2012? I think he played, he played a beautiful pull shot of me the first <laughs> first three balls. Um, luckily, I played I played with, with Bobby uh, at Rajasthan, so we were very close mates. Yeah. So um, play eventually test match, the test match at it against him was was awesome. You know, I think he's still the funniest man going around in world cricket. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's awesome. But um, I also remember, I think if, even if you look at the the YouTube clip now, it, you know, the commentator, I think it's Slat who says it's the best nine they've ever seen in their life. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Bobby, obviously, I mean, in a way, as a mate, you wanted him to do well. Yeah. But uh, you know, it was it was great to to sort of get put our pick in the ground and really kick kickstart that test series of well. And and you're talking there about playing in the IPL. I think you played you played three different teams. Is that right in the IPL? So I played for Rajasthan, Delhi, and Kolkata. K- KKR, that's right, yeah. And in 2014, you won with KKR, and I think you were the best bowler that year for KKR. And we've, we've heard stories in that, in that year about, you know, great partying and, and the gift-giving that KKR celebrated the team's success with. I mean, can you, t- can you tell us about the circuit afterwards, winning, winning the IPL that year? Um. Yeah, so I mean, the IPL is—it's it's, it's honestly a tough gig. I mean, you, mm. you, the games finish late, and there's always like a like an after party or a sponsor function that you need to attend. Mm. Um, you know, I think as a as an international player, I wouldn't say you're forced, but you you need to go show your face. So after doing six to eight weeks of that, you know, playing back to back games, um, you know, doing functions. I mean, some of those places, some of the you know the the after party functions are sort of underground. So next thing, you'll sit there and you'll look at your watch, and it's like. You know, five in the morning, and yeah, <laughs> and you yeah I know my that feeling. <laughs> it, feels, it feels it feels quite weird to sit there with a, a whiskey in your hand at five in the morning, and other people having breakfast. So, um, <laughs> yeah. it, it is quite hard, but um, yeah, I must say it, it is it's it's an incredible experience, you know, to um, yeah, sit sit in those sort of functions and connect with players uh, uh, you know, across the world. I think you know, there was always a little bit of tension when South Africa played Australia or you know England, but um, you know the IPL sort of broke all those sort mm. of sort of differences that there was. I mean, I remember the one year we played um, Australia at the, at the Wanderers, and you know after the Test match, we all got into one bus and we on the bus driving back to the hotel. I mean, never in the world would you, you know, back in the day, would you would you see that? It just shows you, like, you know, the quality or the power of the game and how it can actually unite, flip and, you know, all of us. Yeah. Just yeah. speaking of the Australian South Africa there, Mornay, it's a, that's an amazing yarn. I'd love to know what happens on that bus trip as well. But yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it always it always strikes us here. I think that South Africa is you know holds so many similar values to Australia, particularly in the way we play cricket. Like, uh, which is which is what was what makes for such fiery series. It's like mm. a Springfield Shelbyville <laughs> thing in a lot of ways. You know, like it's just we're just looking at alphas of a, on a different side of the world yeah. going up against each other. I mean, did you guys see it the same way? I know there are cultural differences, but and different contexts <laughs> and histories. But is that the, a correct observation that both sides just sort of seem to go about their cricket in the same way? And every time you play against each other, it's just literally who has the biggest swing in dick. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, the great way to put it. But I, you know, I think for us, um, you know, the reason why we we became successful in Australia was, um, you know, the guys just figured out in the past, like this, so much sort of adrenaline, so much media hype, so much sort of 
things that go into a test match that you know teams really used to struggle um you know keeping up with with the Australian team for three four five days you know they'll they'll compete for day two day three and just because of the constant pressure the crowds I mean back in South Africa you don't have really guys abusing you you've got play uh, play at the MCG you've got ten thousand people that you know abusing you non you know like nonstop and eventually you reach a breaking point so we we sort of really put a point on it that say that okay come day three four five where it really counts you know how can we can we step up and compete and not sort of fade away and um, that was a focus point for us you know when wherever we felt under the pump and they were they were sort of you know getting the upper hand is that you know somebody put their hand up and we said no fuck that we're going to fight back or we're going to stand up you know and if the crowd abuses us it's it's fine and eventually we started to get that confidence eventually you start winning a session and eventually you start building on something and then you win a test match and it's amazing how quickly then the crowd turns. I mean, we played a, the, the, the test match there in, in Perth and, you know, chasing 403 and, you know, the crowd were flipping against us. And then AB and, and Jacques Callas, they, had a, they started having a partnership and, mm. you know, I think JP Germany came in and mm. the crowd was eventually, they turned so quickly and then they were next thing abusing the Aussies. So that was our <laughs> game plan, to flip and hang in there, you know, because things can change quite quickly. And then the media all of a sudden is off our backs. They're focusing now on, you know, the coach, the captain, this guy, that guy. And then, then, it's, then it's sort of not plain sailing, but then you're sort of in, in control. And then after that, because you guys had a, had a really good series win the last time the two test match, uh, the teams played against each other in 2018. I'm not sure if you remember that series, Mornay. Mm. Um, but um, I just I just want to know everything about Durban in 2018. You know, it's, just, it's tea time, you know, you know, Davey and Quinton are going at it. And uh, I don't really care about that, but I want to know everything about Faf Duplessis coming out in the towel. That's all I want to know about. I want to know where you were. I want to know what you were thinking. Does Faf conduct all his team talks naked? You know, can Mm. you tell us everything about that exchange in the Durban stairwell? Look, if you you type in Faf Duplessis in Google, 95% of all the photos will will be with Faf without a shirt. You know, his pants slightly slightly drop so you can see the V-shape. So he's got a a (laughs) body. He works. He works hard on that body, diet, gym, and you know he's got the rig. So yeah. mm. um, there's no excuse. Like he doesn't need an excuse to take his shirt off. And yeah. I think you know we're all sort of getting ready to go out for lunch that day. And you know, Faf was he was obviously Durban is is famous that time of the year for being sort of humidity is quite high, so yeah. sticky and sweaty. And yeah. you know, like I said, he was. Probably he did probably a couple of setups or you know a call cool session before just before lunch, but heard the commotion uh, outside and yeah, I mean he's also he's also one of those guys he's not he he's, he won't stand back you know yeah. he's, he's up, always up up and yeah. I thought you know he sort of ran out and uh, yeah sort of just wanted to be the the bouncer the big brother. <laughs> Well, no, there's, there's a great story in Australian folklore, like cricket history, that uh, about the day Bradman was bowled for naught in his last test, thereby yeah, denying yeah. him the uh, the average of 100, mm. uh, the test average of 100. And then Arthur Morris, who was part of that setup, would, o- would often be asked where he was that day, what his memories of that were, and he'd say, I was up the other end yeah. hitting 196. Um, <laughs> in the same vein, just... Um, with that, uh, with that famous test in Newlands in 2018, <laughs> which will always be known for sandpaper, uh, you took nine far and finished man of the match. Um, what does that mean to you? And can you can you take us into the South African sheds after Cape Town? Like I, I can only imagine it was just champagne celebrations yeah. and again faff in a towel, or maybe the towels <laughs> removed. Towels, towels are still definitely on. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I just yes, tell you what I was. Um, I'll never forget. So we just sort of got off the field and in our change room, we've got like blow up mattresses where the bowlers can have like a 20 minute sleep, just part of the recovery, or you can just lie down, you know, and um, the TV was sort of on and I was just snoozing away. And um, you can hear when you lie and you snooze, you can hear when there's a wicket, you're like, there's this, this like the crowd will like, oh, yeah. well, there's a boundary. Yeah. You can yeah. hear the chair. And there was just a different sort of, different sort of noise. You know, so while I was sort of dozing away and I'm like, what is going on here? So my one eye just um, sort of glanced at the TV and, you know, next thing was, it was, they showed it on, 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 on a telly and then, you know, our flipping entire change room also sort of exploded. And because we obviously saw yeah. you know, Cameron putting the, the, the sandpaper down his, down his pants and the crowd was just like going up, you know, like shot them because they showed it on the big screen and they were like, no, it's down his pants and it's down his pants. So, it was it was 10, 15 minutes of, of chaos. And um, 
yeah, I mean, after that, you know, as a team, if something like that happens, you know, you've got the upper hand. So it was important for us then and there to, to you know, really stamp our, our, our foot on the authority or like, and take it down and um you didn't have to say anything uh, i think you just you just stared a guy and, <laughs> and they knew that you know that yeah. this that was the case so, but um yeah great day of cricket for me personally taking taking um sort of nine wickets and you know six second last this match playing for south africa to walk away with the man of a match achievement was was quite special mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like I said, the, the test match will be remembered for a lot of other things. <laughs> so, so basically, the takeaway is Mornay Morkel slept through sandpaper. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> kept an eye on it. Kept an eye, but it's just having a kip. Yeah, yeah, I was just having a snooze, and then <laughs> there we go. It's on. There's this, uh, there's this great thing with sandpaper Mornay, where like a, you know, it's it's obvious a bunch of people know the truth, you know, about what happened. But there's this like yeah. omerta code of silence, you know, like a mafioso style yeah. and. Um, you, you, you guys will definitely know what the approach was with the broadcasters, you know, highlighting Australia's use. Like, I, I guess what I'm asking is, uh, you know, are you excited to release a book at some point highlighting what happened from South Australia's, uh, South, Australia, South Africa's perspective? <laughs> no, 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 no. I think, you know, that's the story is done and dealt with. It's got a, enough attention. Um, you know, I think it's, it's time to, time to move on. You know, I've got, I've got no real story to tell. Um, well, you, you know, asleep. I think, I think <laughs> eh? you were asleep. <laughs> you were asleep. <laughs> yeah, I was asleep. I was, I don't know what's going on. So, um, yeah, no, they, they've paid, they've paid, paid the price. I mean, life is, life moves on and, you know, yeah. So no story to tell, to tell from my side. There's, um, there's, there's great, uh, there's great, great history for Australia at Cape Town because in 2011, um, Australia got bowled out for 47 there, mm. uh, when they were nine for 21. Yeah. I mean, like it, uh, South Africa just must love playing. Uh, Australia at Cape Town because something always goes down there. Mm. <laughs> uh, it is a fortress. I mean that that test match. Oh, I mean, how was that? You know, we got bowled out, and as a as a bowling unit, we were like, oh, we're back in the field. You know, mm. they're probably going to bat now for a day and a half. Um, and yeah, we flipping managed to get one or two early wickets, and you know, Vernon was was in fine form that day. And yeah, rolling out for forty-two. I don't yeah. think anybody can would imagine that. Uh, yeah. um, you probably roll your eyes. We've just returned to sandpaper again. Um, <laughs> there's so much. Like uh, what, one thing that we hear. I, so far, because a semi-serious question about it. This, like when we hear about sandpaper now, and people are trying to work through it, and we agree with you. We've said this before. You know, I don't even think the public has much of an appetite to even go back into it that much. It's just that there are so many things we don't know and that are unsaid, and the cover-ups worse than the crime and all that kind of stuff. But one thing you keep hearing is that, like, look, you know. Every team had a ball management system. You know, it's that great euphemism. Every team was doing something, right? And, like, so then people are starting to suggest, well, maybe there should be an amnesty and every player from other teams come together in a big 60-minute production that Mm. Mike Atherton hosts where Mm. we all talk about the way we manage the ball. Hands across the world. Hands across the world. (laughs) It's just, yeah, like the 1980s singing a song. (laughs) Singing a song for AIDS, yeah. But, like, uh, is is that some – and that's one way people try and explain to the Joe Average that, like, Everyone was doing something at that time, you know. And I suppose my question to you is, without having to uh, ask you how you guys did it, <laughs> is that is that fair to say? Like everyone had a way. They caught us in Australia. I mean, you know, Fuff was on Channel Nine with a lolly in his mouth, so um, <laughs> all our, all our face was exposed early on. You know, AB with a glove, Vernon with a zipper. You know, we've tried every trick in the book. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> That's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, got, we 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 didn't go that extreme with with sandpaper. No, yeah. I mean, but yeah, I think every every team definitely, in a way, you know, they have a story to tell. Um, but let's let's wait and see for that day. <laughs> also, <laughs> <we're all> complete. <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, obviously, Mona, you you now you know uh, living in Australia. Mm-hmm. You know, you're married to Roz. Obviously, Australians will know Roz very well. Uh, but I mean, how satisfying was it? There was Australia who sort of copped the brunt. Yeah, look, it's, it's a tricky <laughs> to answer <laughs> because, uh, um, you know, I'm, yeah. Now, look, to be honest, um, it was, it was satisfying, to be honest. I mean, just, <laughs> you, you think, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking from a, from a team sort of perspective, yeah. you know, uh, we, we've, we've come here to Australia for years and, yeah. you know, the, abuse and the amount of stuff that happened on and off the field you know there there was it was it was tough it wasn't yeah. easy yeah. um 
you know, I think sometimes as a, as a, as a cricket team, you, you think and say, yes, you know, I wish the tables can turn. Can, can something just happen that yeah, can yeah. just, you know, level the playing field a little bit? Yeah. And, you know, that is like a, that's like a movie. The day that happened, everybody was just like, boom, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Have that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to see it then from there escalate and go to the matches that it did. Yeah. Um, you know, that was, that was, wow, like, Crazy, you know, yeah. this is quite scary. Because mm. like I said, I mean, we, Faf got caught mm. in South Africa, uh, over in Australia, mm. you know, and got the demerit points, we moved on from that match band. But to see Australia then go, you know, what, the way they did, it was, it was like, gee, was okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, this is, there's bigger things at stake here now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when Faf got caught, like Steve Smith came out and said, no, we do the same thing, except that when like Bancroft got caught, I didn't hear anything from Faf. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, you, maybe, you maybe must get Faf to come and explain that, but uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, if, yeah. But can you ask him or we've asked, we've asked everybody else <laughs> if we can get him on? Hey, um, Mornay, anything else from you? Mate, yeah, mate thanks so much. Great, great. Uh, and very generous. Thanks so much for chatting with us. And, um, you know, if people are going to be hanging out for those YouTube clips of Mornay Morkel versus Northern Districts just terrorising <laughs> more 19-year-olds uh, <laughs> with short of a length bowling going past their face. Uh, awesome. Guys, thank you so much.